Right. I'm going to go ahead and start recording this just because if we have a discussion, then maybe it'll help other people out too. Um, and Arthur just asked uh, about how to go about choosing a coach or mentor and, you know, some tips and stuff. And I, I'm, I'm not, I mean, I'm not an expert and I do mentor people and I have been mentored by others. Um, and I think that it's a very personal thing. You know, you have to click with the person that's helping you because, you know, it's, you know what it, you know, if even in school, right, if you have a teacher who, who just doesn't get you or doesn't, doesn't, uh, for some reason, you're, you just don't, you know, your personalities don't match or whatever, it doesn't go well, right, you don't want to learn from that person. So you, you kind of push back a little bit or you, or you, you know, phase it over or don't listen or whatever. Um, so I think that, that, you know, first trying to find that person by just looking at what they do, what they offer, you know, how, how close to what they photograph is what you photograph. You know, if I'm a landscape person, I'm not going to go looking for somebody who's a mentor in, in, you know, portrait photography, you know, that's obvious. Right. I, I think that's obvious. Um, but, you know, and also their style, are they, are they hands-on? Are they, um, are they, um, what is, okay, hold on. I can't, I can't do two things at once, I swear. Sorry. So are they, um, you know, are they, are they hands on, right? Like, do they spend time with you? Are you paying them um, to spend time with you? Or do they have everything like already pre recorded? And maybe you have like a once a week or once a month session with them, um, you know, to go over images, or that kind of thing. So it depends you know, on what you're looking for, how best you learn, um, you know, as to what you, you, how you go about finding that person. Um, I think another really good idea is to ask in any other groups you're in, you know, maybe in the photo focus community, just, just put it out there, you know, who has been learning from who, or, you know, who recommends somebody to learn landscape from, or who recommends somebody to, to, to learn something specific from whether it's the basics, you know, the very basics of learning your camera um, or specific things like composition or color theory or anything like that. Um, you know, it, it's there's so many photographers out there and so many people at different levels going through the same thing or who have already been through the same thing, you know, that I think that, um, you know, it's always good to ask around too, you know um but yeah price wise you're you know that's a i know like what i charged in the beginning i know wasn't enough because i wasn't confident in what i was doing you know yeah, yeah. and i just felt like it's like when you first start selling your artwork you know it's like oh i'm just gonna put this price on hope somebody you know buys it well you're undervaluing yourself and you shouldn't do that but you know we all feel like when you're starting something that yeah you know i don't feel like i'm i'm worthy of being paid as much as you know the guy who's been around for 50 years which is true i think you know if you pay for somebody who's um a master at what they do you know that's a little different than paying somebody who's a hobbyist who's just trying to help other people kind of a thing yeah. Yeah. you know so it, it's a lot of, there's a lot to consider yeah i think um, when you're trying to find somebody to help you, um, you know, I, again, it depends on how you like to learn. Obviously, there's there's so much information out there, videos and books and just, you know, websites and and all yeah. that. But I mean, I find personally, I learn better when somebody's showing me, you know, I could watch 15 videos on the same thing. But if somebody shows me how to do it and I do it myself, like I'm I'll be OK with that. But I can watch more videos and I still won't get it, you know. But I, like I said, there's the gamut is out there, right? You can find courses that walk you through it without one on one help, where everything's recorded. You can find one on one people, one on one who are local, who will, who will, you know, meet with you and go over things in person, workshops or, um, you know, individual, you know, if you want to mm -hmm. do more one on one type stuff. So it, it's like I said, it, de it depends. I hate to say it depends, but it does. <laughs> One of the things I wrestle with, uh, you know, most of my feedback I get is through online sources like this and others. Right. And uh, 
you know, any given picture in any given day can fly or not fly where you post it because it depends on who's looking and what mood they're in. But right. <laughs> I've, I've noticed over time that um, particularly my black and white images tend to get stronger response on average than my color ones to a significant degree. Uh -huh. And when I lay them side by side, I can't, you know, for the most part, I can't say uh, this one's better than that one. It's, you know, it's just grayer. <laughs> right. So that's one of the things I'm hoping to sort of get through. You know, I love black and white photography. It's mostly what I do, but um, it'd be interesting to understand why it is that typically a color version of a picture that I take doesn't resonate with people. Um, so. I have no, an opinion. I mean, I think that, in my opinion, people look at black and white as more artistic, which isn't always the case. But I think just a general public, it depends on who you're getting the comments from, you know. Well, typically other photographers. Okay. And are you asking for feedback? Are you asking for specific feedback? That's the other thing, you know, people post their stuff out there, but don't actually give anybody any indication of if they want help, or if they want um you know they don't tell like any any information about the image why they took it or how they took it or you know and if you want feedback you have to you have to i think you know explain a little bit about what what is what you want feedback on right mm -hmm. um you know it's like the people that go out there and put color or black and white well you decide you you took the picture like how do you want it to right. present to the public right, right. um you know, if it's a popularity contest, well, then it's different, <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm new enough that if, uh, you know, 100 people like it or 10 people like it, <laughs> that's that's a meaningful difference to me. And right, I, right. And I want to understand, right. okay, so they're seeing something or not seeing something. Right. And I would so, benefit from understanding that. But that, that's a lot of why I'm looking Right, to, to, right. To work with a coach who can say, okay, well, you know, look at this aspect or look at that aspect. Right, right. Then the next time I'm out, I can remember that. So. Right. Or or ask the people that, you know, make the comments on your image. You know, what is it about this image that you do like? Yeah. You know, at, be, more, be more specific about the feedback that you want from your viewers. You know, what is it that you like? You know, I, people are... A lot of times I'll post something, people be like, oh, there, I, I scrolled by and I could tell that with your image. Well, how? I, you know, it's another, just another image to me. I mean, you know, yeah. overall, but like what made it jump out to you as one of my images, you know, because that's a really good thing if people start recognizing your work without seeing your name attached to it, you know, they know your style, they know your subject matters and how you photograph things. Yeah. But you you have to you have to ask the questions also, you know, of the of to get more information back, you know, why people like it. And it pushes people. I still struggle with that. I have a hard time explaining why I like an image, you know, yeah, it's pretty. It's a beautiful landscape. It's a beautiful bird or whatever, you know, but what is it specifically? I find difficult to put words to explain those things but it makes you better it makes you understand then like when you're helping someone else right yeah um but I, I still find it difficult to what is it what is it that you like about this image you know and i'm like well you know um it's hard it's a hard yeah. description for me I, you know some people are good at that i struggle with that yeah and if, if you put a picture of flower up and the, and the feedback is oh i really like flowers that's yeah, great. I right. Happy to hear it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's not there are right. And you thousand pictures an hour of flowers. Yes, and cats. Uh, you know, <laughs> but it it's um it's hard too because I was I was taught when like doing critiques and I I don't I've said this before I don't care for the word critique but um that there's always something positive to find so I've been in a in a photography group, a scavenger hunt photography group for 10 years. And it's, there is no negativity in there. There is no egos. There are no like 
prima donnas. It's, it's everybody's equal, right? It doesn't matter who you are, what you shoot, how you shoot, how you edit. And it's always positive, right? So even if the image isn't good technically, or, you know, there's people who shoot in there with their phones, right? And there's people who are, you know, have pro level equipment. So, but we still all are positive and we're still all like, oh, I love the colors in that. I like the way you compose that. There's always ways to be positive about it. And then like, if there's something that's a little bit off, you then you go, you know, like, so you, you tell them the positive first and then not to be negative, but you're like, well, this um, piece of tree sticking in the side is, is catching my eye and distracting me. You know, you explain to them what it is that is not quite, you know, kosher with the image in your eye, you know. Um, I think, you know, social media made it easy for people to be like, you know, you should have done that and I would have done this and this is how I should, I would have done it. And well, you're not me, right? I, I'm not asking you to shoot, I shot this and I saw this, you know, so um, we, we've gone to that place where, you know, everybody's a critic which, you know, everybody is, and especially nowadays, it's even more so, and everybody has free license to say whatever they want to people, you know, so I, I don't see a lot of that in the photography world, because those aren't the people that I'm, I'm friends with, or that follow me, but uh, I'm a positive person anyway, so I, I just don't go that route, again, if I see an image, and I'm like, eh, you know, doesn't really do much for me, but I'm not going to say, eh, I don't like that shot, <laughs> you know. And if they ask me for help on it, I tell them what I do like and what I see that works and then, you know, what might not work. So. Thank you. Like I said, I'm a. Uh, that's exactly Gail just said love the sandwich method method and I don't know where you got that from Gail because that's how I learned. And there's two people I've learned that from, and one was, uh, both of them have been mentors of mine. And that's where you say something positive and nice, and then you share like opportunities, you know, how they could have changed something or what little things that they might have done differently, um, you know, without, they're not doing anything wrong, right? They're learning. So you're, you learn by making mistakes. You know, so you can't be like, look, you did this wrong. Well, you didn't do it wrong. You're, you just, you know, you did it how you thought it was supposed to be or how you knew how to do it. And then you share, you know, something that's positive again. So there's a, someone, one of my mentors has a graphic. I should ask, ask him, I, I mean, I'm going to write it down. Ask him if I can find it or share it with, with you guys. Um, because he, in his mentorship program, and he has a community that he runs that, that um, is awesome, and I'm still I'm still in there. I've been a part of his world basically for I I don't know probably ten years also. Um, but I always laugh about the sandwich method because when I, I worked in the dental industry and there was there's a technique for fillings that's the same. <laughs> it's called the same thing. So, but it makes sense. So you know you just you uh, again. You got to go out there and look for who you feel is a fit for what you're trying to learn. Um, I think that, you know, in the photo focus community, we could probably do better at being more, I mean, we share articles and you can always go to our site and find articles. Um, I would love to do more presentations like Julie and I have done one each in the past. Um, and if people have suggestions, and maybe I'll put that out as a poll or a or a questionnaire, and have people suggest things that they want us to present, um, because personally, I think that these hangouts are are great. But I think that as members of a community, you are likely to get more out of something that's structured like that, like the the presentations are, and they don't have to be long. They could be just little tips on you know here's how to do this in Lightroom for ten minutes, you know that kind of stuff. I suppose the other thing that might be nice um, or a way to go about it and, and different people will like it or not is you you invite us to submit an image that we're struggling with and we'll talk about it session right and we, we did start you, doing that we did yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and i'll do and that again yeah i'll do that again we were kind of trying to do every other yeah like that, every other month helpful. 
Another way to go about it that might be interesting for some people would be post three pictures that you're really you're really proud of, you really like them, and and they're just you know they're close to your heart. And three that. You, you wish had come out better or worked better or for some reason in your mind, they, they just didn't get over the hurdle, whatever your hurdle is. And let the group say, okay, we agree, we disagree. This one's right, actually right. just as good as no, that. Or yeah, that's a what. good idea too. Rather than necessarily picking apart one that you have a specific problem with. As an amateur, one of my questions is, I know there's a problem, but I can't figure even out what it is, let alone how to fix it. And that would be a way to, to have that kind of a discussion. Right, right, right. Yeah, sometimes that's that's the, the hard part is that is just that, right? You know that there's something not right, but you can't figure out or put it in words exactly what what it might be. So no, those are great. Or, I wrote those. I wrote those down. Yeah, I mean, look, as you pointed out before, learning to see is half the battle. That's, if, you can't, but, if you can't see it, you're not going to fix it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. And that, that applies to like post-processing and, you know, even, even after you take the image and tr like you trying to figure out why, you know, something's not sitting right with you. So, um, so we just, we just, um, a couple more people have popped in. Um, we've been talking about how, good ways and, and ideas to help us get better for one um arthur asked for tips on how to find somebody to work with that can help you a mentor or a teacher um and uh it's recorded so if you guys miss that part i don't i don't want to go all over it again but um if you guys have anything that you would like to contribute as far as that goes um you know a lot of it was the whole it depends because it depends on what you want and what you you know who you work well with and who you don't and that sort of thing so um we've also been talking a little bit about some other ideas for within the community possibly doing some more presentations um getting uh members again and we we did this a while ago we haven't done it for a while to submit images um to you know have us help with uh depends on who's available as well because i don't want to be the only one doing it <laughs> Um, because there's authors out there who have far more experience on some of the things like post-processing or using Photoshop or, you know, other software. I'm a very, uh, like, uh, simple, like I don't spend a lot of time in that area. So, um, if those are the kind of things that need, people need help with, I'm not that person. So I don't want to be sitting on a call and being like, well, I don't know. I can't help you. Um, cause you know, that's not helpful for anybody. Um, but if we can get those kind of images in advance, I can, you know, badger my fellow focus authors to be on the call um, and we can work that out too. So um, that way, that way we can, you know, make this a learning experience, I think for all of us, which is, is what photo focus is about, you know, and, and what we'd like these hangouts to be about um, inspiration, learning, uh, you know, and getting people just more involved, you know. Um, and Gail suggested too to find a local photography club, you know, members that want to help. Um, you know, Facebook meetups are are good too in in different areas. Um, anytime you're out with other photographers, you, you're going to naturally gravitate to the people that you're going to connect with who either. Um, like if you're out with me, I'm I'm usually like the person who's not shooting. I'm usually trying to help people because it's just my personality. Um, if it's something I can help with, if not, I probably know somebody who can, and I'll be like, oh, I'll get you in touch with that person. Um, so yeah, I like I, I said before, you know, even just just asking in, in groups, in Facebook groups and stuff. Um, I local photography clubs. I've I'm uh, it, it again. Um, it depends on your local club. It depends on the people that are involved and how they operate. Um, I've heard, you know, there's good and bad. There's good and bad in everything. Um, there's sometimes people who are, you know, some of the, somebody told me a story about how the rules of how they pick when they have competitions were just like 
straight, solid, no swaying, no diverting from those rules. So like anybody who, who in this particular case submitted something that was somewhat artistic um, or, or overly like a composite or something that leaned a little more towards the digital art side was just like, no, not even allowed, you know? So, you know, you have to, you have to feel out the local groups um, to see how they operate and who's in them and, and, you know, the dynamics of it all. Um, uh, great points, Lori. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Good. Good. This is Mark. Yep. Yeah. Those are, those are all great points. And, uh, you know, when it comes to clubs and, and even contests and things like this, I had to come to the point where I realized these people aren't my clients are never going to be my clients. Right. I really don't care what they think. So, you know, it really uh, comes down to, for me, who's going to buy a photograph from me and why? That was the question I had to look in the mirror and ask myself, you know. Right. And, uh, amid all of the competition out there in terms of mentorship, it's interesting. That's why I'm even here at Photo Focus. It's, uh, I need to be here a lot more. But, uh, um, you know, I listened to Scott back in the day, like a lot of people uh, that were trying to take on uh, photography as a profession. Um, you know, he gave me some really great advice uh, along the way, personally, that helped me greatly, uh, mainly about being absolutely brutal uh, with myself when it comes to gauging and critiquing my own work. Um, not fall in love with your babies, all these things that he used to like to say. <laughs> and uh on his show a lot and uh, so those were all very good uh scott and a lot of the writers at the uh, photo focus uh, website um have became mentors to me in that way over the right. years and right. uh so that's my own personal uh situation on mentorship and i love just helping other people uh as well with uh with their cameras i find that to be probably more rewarding than shooting my own stuff well, anymore the other thing too is when you're teaching you learn right i mean i've probably learned a ton just by helping others Great you know point. so that's the thing you know it's like you i was always like oh i can't teach people i don't know enough to teach but i know exactly. enough right i i you always know something more than somebody else right somebody's well, I, starting you know somebody doesn't know how to do this and and i i joke a lot about not being technical but i know how to use my camera you know do i want to sure. talk about how to use a camera no do I want to show somebody how to use theirs? Not necessarily, but I can if somebody asks me, you know. Yeah. Um, but doing those things also helps you, you know, solidify in your own head some of the stuff that you might not have. You'd be like, well, I'm not sure, but I think if you do that, you know, well, it, and helps, it helps you learn too. My, my wife has been a good um, sounding board for me over the years uh, in helping me uh, keep my thoughts, you know, in, in other words, like, you know, it takes somebody from the outside sometimes to tell you, hey, man, you're, you know, you know a lot more than you realize. You need to yes. stop and make a list yes. of the little things. Look at these yep. little things that you don't even think about. Right. And uh, and it's still hard for me to to come up with those lists. It's still hard for me to quantify them. Again, I don't feel qualified to be doing any of it. So. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. But it's, you know, I've, this is how I've learned. And I thought, well, who am I just to sit on it? I may as well throw it out there and share it, you know. I mean, right. Who knows if the timing is right for someone? Never know. Right, right. So that's the kind but of stuff you can talk about. Yeah. To focus. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Lauren. No, that's okay. Including yourself, you you don't you don't give yourself any credit. Uh, you know, <laughs> I think that's awesome. But yeah, no, you guys, you know, a lot of so much good insight from different from so many different uh, places at Photo. Focus. Right, there there is. There's a lot of different yeah. perspectives. A lot of different. Um, uh, genres of stuff out there. And, and, you know, it's funny as, as a writer, you know, I'll be like, I'll send, I'll send an article and I'll be like, this is just fluff. And it's like, well, it is just fluff and we need fluff though, because some of those little articles about things that people don't even think about are actually can resonate with others. Right. And so it's when even more so, even more so. Right. Yeah. Cause when you're learning, those are the little things that sometimes matter, you know, the little things that, that aren't like, you know, learning about focal distance and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes those little things that seem like fluff are important for you as a photographer to to hear, you know, like I also think, too, that that, you know, hearing about those kind of things and, and make you when you're learning, especially be like, oh, God, thank God I don't have to learn about that. Like Julie has an article coming out 
about Photoshop. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> so I'm not gonna, I won't, I won't, you know, uh, I won't uh, ruin it, but it, it away. It, it's a right. Yeah. But it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, if somebody would have said that to me a long time ago, I would have, I would have felt a whole lot better a long time ago, you know? Yes. Yes. You, you feel you feel pressure from all sides on how you know that you should be doing this or you should be doing that or this is how you you know this is what you should use and you need to do that and you need to use this software and it, you know it's like uh, nowadays you don't need to you don't need to do any of that you do what you want to do and use your phone if that's all you want to use right. I still go out with just my phone some days because I don't feel like carrying my camera I yeah. don't feel like messing around with it you know and then Am I going to take that million dollar shot on that day? Well, hopefully not, you know, <laughs> but, but you're still out, you know, you're still out creating, which I think is the important thing that, that gets left behind sometimes. Well, um, yeah, exactly. I'm sitting here right now. I uh, am a contracting firm doing 3d modeling for architectural and engineering. <laughs> and I've been falling back on this for 25 years. This has actually been my career. This is my original career choice that, I didn't know that I would like to choose for photography as a career until, well, you know, things happen in this industry where you get laid off, brought right. back on, laid off, brought back on. It's up and down and all around. You never know, feast or famine. So, you know, when you have children that are small and I, at the time and I thought, well, maybe I should maybe I should listen to my family and start taking photography more seriously. Maybe I should start a business and figure out how to do this. And such so when I really found Scott's work and and um you know, it's been a humbling experience, but here I am. I'm not, I'm still not doing it full time for a living, but I still have my business and I do it when I want to do it and I do it to enjoy it. And, you know, the business part of it is difficult. That is not for everyone. No, it isn't. <clears throat> and it certainly wasn't for me. I've tried and I've been able to piece together, you know, ancillary income and uh, some good, good relationships uh, through, through photo focus, through, uh, through uh, Ron, uh, Ron Pepper and, Right. Photomatics. I do. I do voiceover work for Photomatics, and so that's been a, a real, a real uh, treat just to come out of the blue. Little things like that. The relationships that, that can develop, uh, with camera companies and camera. Uh, right. Right. Di just different things. That that makes it pretty exciting at times too. But, um, you know, it's a it's a, it's a tricky. It's a, it's really a slippery slope when it comes to doing it for a living. And, uh, you know, trying to maintain the zeal for, uh, you know, I don't, again, I don't see myself as a creative person. I see myself as, as a documentarian. I'm more documenting things in my mind than I am being creative right, or artistic. Right. I don't see myself really that way. Uh, but, you know, I certainly enjoy and learn from artists right. uh, all the time. And uh, that mentality, I wish I could let myself do it more. Well, I, I think, too, that that there's a there's a, you know, most, I don't know, probably most of the people in our community are hobbyists. You know, I know a lot of people in the community are retired, you know, and this is what they do for fun. They're not really sure. trying to make money off of it. And I, I think that's the other thing that sometimes people feel pressure, like they should be doing something with it, you know, and, and for a lot of people it's therapy or it's something to do with your time um, yeah. that you enjoy. And it gets like, for me, it gets me out of that. Yes. It's, it's my business. I mean, I don't, I said this once before, but I don't really make any money at it, not much, but you know, um, yeah. it gets me out of the house. If I didn't, if I didn't take photos, I mean, I can, I take photos here too in my house, but um, you know, it, it's, it's still, um, the, the, there's still so much to learn even as a hobbyist, right? Because there's so many things to explore with photography, different types and different genres and, you know, depending on where you live, you know, if I didn't live by Chicago, I might not take architectural shots, you know? Right. So um, all those yeah, things uh, are, are things to consider too. You know, it's, it's, um, it's okay think to just it, be a hobbyist, you know, you, we get you're right. And I think pushed. about it all the time. And that's where my wife is get on me all the time. Stop it. You know, you're, I mean, most people aren't doing this for that reason. Right. They just want right. to take better photos. They just want yes. to take better photos with the exactly. camera. Man. Yeah. You know, I uh, just, you know, how did you and do that right. Not over there? And Tell them how like, you did it. Right. That's like what Arthur was when we first started the call, he asked the question about, you know, trying to find somebody to help him um, and how to find a good mentor or a good teacher. Um, you know, we kind of talked about all that in different ways, you know, 
to, to go about that and different things to think about when you're looking for someone to help you. Um, you know, you know, you know how, how, let me just share this really quick. This, this is interesting. The, um, when, how I first con got into contact with Scott at all is I shot a, a golf course for a local golf course here, a high end upscale golf course. And I worked for them for a couple of summers back in the day when I was younger. So I had relationships with these guys. So I had, you know, access to the place to get the best shots of the place. Nobody could get these shots, but, but somebody that works there. And so, and is there every morning at sunrise. I mean, you just can't get right. these libraries unless you have that access. And so I had this library and I, I quoted them a price. They were interested in, in having the whole gallery. I, I gave them a, I gave them a, uh, um, a price and I heard nothing, just crickets. And I know these people. And so it started to affect me. And this is right at the beginning. And I called, I emailed Scott and asked him, hey, here's the deal. Here's the numbers that I use. Here's the gallery link. You know, where did I mess up? What, about, what did I do wrong here? And my phone rang. And I didn't think about it being him. I thought it was a creditor or something because he's across the country. I didn't recognize the area code. And he, he started talking and I picked up. And he said, you're giving it away. Mark, you're giving that image away. And he went on to give me further advice that I won't say here, but uh, it was good advice. And uh, he really set me straight on how a professional looks at it versus somebody. He's like, he really tried to encourage me at that time. He was like, you're not selling carpet. I've looked right. at the gallery. I looked at the gallery. The gallery is fine. Your numbers are awfully low. They're way right. low. They're not even going to see you. They're not even going to see you. And they know you. So, you know, that's why it's happening to you. So, you know, I've had, I had to learn, you know, a hard lesson there about how to price things and all right. of that. You know, but that but so that's good, how I, yeah. it, it's a good point too, though, to, to even, even when you're trying to learn or learning and there's somebody you admire, um, mm -hmm. like if you follow somebody online that you think is unreachable or untouchable or whatever, don't, don't like, um, I call them. It never hurts to call or send them, a, send them a message or an email or whatever, because most, the majority of photographers are more than willing to help as Absolutely. long as they have the time and, you know, um, they're more than willing to help. So that, that's a good, a good example and, of, and, and, you know, for just those, re reach out to somebody, you know, yes, don't, don't, don't be fearful. Uh, they want to help you. And, and, and on top of that, uh, hold on a second here. What was it? The, uh, um, Oh, lost my train of thought, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> the, uh, uh, oh, darn it. It'll come back to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. The, uh, the, um, <sighs> sorry, something you just said about reaching out to people. Uh, yes. And, 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 and not being afraid. And as a result of that, uh, Rich put out a, put out a, uh, a feeler not long after that saying hey you know guest articles anybody wants to you right. know, send anything in and so i fearfully cobbled together a little something <laughs> and sent it over to them thinking i don't know and, and uh and they said send another one right and uh so i sent another one and they said hey just come on you know and uh, right. and, uh so it, you never know no uh, you don't and i i use this too and that's another way to learn is to start writing about stuff Mm -hmm. um, even even if it's for your own personal blog, like you, Arthur was saying, you know, you you have an image, but you can't you can't really pinpoint or describe what it is about it that isn't sitting well with you. Um, write about it. Just start writing. And I and again, this doesn't have to be for anybody's eyes at all, right? Even if it's right. uh, pen and paper or whatever, um, just start writing like what you're seeing in the image or what eventually i think if you keep writing about it whatever it is that's not sitting right with you will come out you know because you're you're just processing all the thoughts and everything that you see and and that one thing that you find that that might not be quite you know in sync with with what you think should be the image you know feeling like or looking like um might just present itself to you because you're putting it all out there um you know again on paper you know type it up whatever it doesn't have to be for anybody um, That's right. but I think that is a really, I, I probably should do that myself. And I've talked about it. I've had this discussion with myself before, right? Start looking at your own images and describing them and, um, 
you know, that will help you learn too. Like you'll start seeing things eventually in your own images that you, it's maybe something that you do all the time, or maybe there's something that you're not doing that you start recognizing that you should do. Um, but if you continue to do that on a regular basis with your own images, you, you'll learn more also, you know, um, it's just another way to learn, um, different things Absolutely. about your own stuff and how to how to describe them and how to talk about it with when you're in a group you know if we have a group and you want us you know we want to say something about somebody's image or you're in a group on online and you're you know somebody posts something and you want to give feedback you know you you get better at it by doing it you know yes and the best That's place right. to start it, is with your own work i think well it is and and in private you know get used to hearing the sound of your own voice get over all that crap you yeah. know, and, and start and start giving. You know, it really is. Uh, it really is uh, the way to go. Uh, so many good things have happened to me just by choosing to give instead yeah. of trying to make money. Um, I've had good clients. Some of my best paying work has come through those types of avenues. People that just end up liking you as a person that really can be the difference most of the time. Right. Being right. being accessible, being available. <laughs> Scott would say that all the time on his show too. If I ever call on you, and you better be there. Right. <laughs> if I, if you have a number listed, you know, not, not me, but anybody out right, there. For, right. The right. If I right. reach out to you, if I'm trying to lift you up here and I can't reach you, then bye-bye. Right. You need to be locatable, reachable. People need to be able to talk to you. You need to be able to right. show up at conferences. People need to see you. They need to know who you are. And uh, all that kind of confidence goes up when all that kind of stuff happens. And yeah, it's, and it, it, it's true. You know, um, you know, I, I've had two careers going the whole time. I've never been able to give full, full dedication to one. And it's been, it's been a, it's, I've wanted to, and I tried right. to. And you different. eventually you will, like I said, I mean, you yeah. look at, when you look at a lot of the photography groups, I mean, there's so, you know, the, the photo focus community is, as I believe a majority of people in there are retired, right? So this right. is their second career or a hobby or, you know, and, you know, it'll happen. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree. I think so. I think in due time, in due time, I'm able to. The older the kids get, the less <laughs> crazy right. things it's are. It's that whole, it's that whole responsibility thing. And time, it is nice, you know, because uh, whenever we would go and do try to do fun things as a family, I would spend all my time with my camera. And yeah. you know, I, I just wish I could have some of those times back, frankly, but. <laughs> You know, spending all this time thinking about how I can make a photograph instead of just relax and have fun. Leave the camera right. at home. Right. Don't take it for yeah. once. Yep. Well, yeah. So. It, it, I mean, photography can be an obsession. It can. And most photographers, I believe, are a little obsessed or obsessive. Well, if you take, if you take it, if you're trying to do it <laughs> as a living and you and your everything depends on it. Yeah. I mean, it becomes it becomes a different beast altogether. Uh, right. It becomes, a, you know, it, it, it's not the same thing. And that's what separates successful pros, I think. Or they're able to locate a market, they, you know, a niche within a market they right, love. It's right, something I haven't right. been able to do. I've not been able right. to niche out. I'm kind of a jack of all trades and don't know that I'll ever be anything but that. But see, um, and that's that's where, I mean, and this is a little bit of a different discussion than where we started here. I'm, I'm the same way. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to go do what I don't want to do. And if it right. pays well, I don't. I uh, still not going to go do it. Right. So that's why, you know, I'm not, I don't define success by money. So, um, right. which is good and bad because I, if I don't make money, well, I'm not making money. I'm still, you know, living my life and I'm, I'm okay with that. You know, yep. I listened um, to a pro say that once he was like, Hey, if you're going to snub your nose, if you want to make money at photography and you're going to snub your nose at weddings, you're in trouble. And I, I was that guy. I never have shot a wedding. I've never shot a wedding and I never will shoot a wedding. So I, you know, I'm sure I've shot myself in the foot financially by choosing that, but I'm still not going to do it. Yeah. Couldn't no. pay me to do it. Right. No. And that's, that's, that's the thing. And that's, you know, when you get, when you're, when you're beyond that and you're not trying to make money at it and it's just a hobby, then it's especially important, you know, try everything and then go back and, and photograph whatever it is you want to photograph. Yeah. You know, what I, makes I would you like happy? To provide but I want to provide photography for people in my area as a service that they can actually afford. I don't want them to feel like they can't afford it. Good photography. Not that I provide good photography, but I'm trying to. And, you know, so many people in my area are fleecing people. 
and especially in the realm of weddings, in my opinion, opinion. I mean, I'm a photographer. I know what it takes to shoot a wedding, but the money these people are charging. I mean, I'll tell you what, I've been married for 20 some odd years. I've never looked at my wedding photos. I don't know. I don't even have my first wedding photo. So (laughs) I believe it. I couldn't afford to pay for them and I I never got them. Yeah. Well, yeah. Same here. We could have, <laughs> yeah, we were like, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> and that, that, that becomes a whole other discussion. And I, I, as I was rearranging things in my office yesterday, I have uh, 13 empty photo albums, right? Because I used to buy them when they were on sale. And I'm like, do I take the time now to take all the photos that I have in boxes or in Rubbermaid tubs and start putting them in albums? Or do I just leave them alone and start sorting through and throwing out the crap because I don't have any kids. I don't have any family that is going to want all of those photos. This is like a big dilemma for me lately, right? Uh-huh. I have all my, my yeah. parents photos. Um, and it's, I, you know, I wrote an article about the legacy of our images it, and it's, it's a huge topic, I think. And I, I'm like, who's nobody's going to want all these photos of mine. Like what happens to them? So why then, why am I even doing this? Right. Why am I even taking pictures? Like nobody cares. Nobody's going to do anything with them. They're probably not going to be hanging in a museum 50 years from now. So why, what's the point? You know, my, this is my brain, right? This is how my brain works. I have, I have like all these tubs of photos and I'm like, what do I do with them? Yeah. I I just, I don't, That's a whole other discussion, I think. I'm with you. Uh, I'm with you. I'm beginning, uh, I'm beginning out to one of these the same days. thing. It is. That's a great topic. It, it, it is. Really I is. think it is. I Just because I'm personally going through it for the last few years since my mom passed away. And she was yeah. a photo. She was a camera person. You know, she had, uh, she was the family, you know, record taker, record maker. So there's, there's just, it's overwhelming. And I, I like yesterday moved my scanner closer to my desk thinking, okay, I'll start scanning some of this. Ugh. But oh Why? my God, that's so time consuming. <laughs> it is so it time is. consuming. It is, and I could pay, I could send them away and pay somebody to do it. But then what am I going to, you know, it's like, then what do you do with them? Who's ever going to look at them? There's an, interesting, there's an interesting corollary to what you're both saying that I, I learned a few years ago. When I think about it in photography, <clears throat> I talked to an author who was writing a, a history of Silicon Valley and went to people like Steve Jobs and Bill Gates and a bunch of other people who had every email they'd ever sent or received since, oh my God. you know, wow. <laughs> but wow. the first 20 years of it was totally useless because there wasn't software in existence that could read it. <laughs> right. So why do you have it? And, and I think about that, you know, we're all doing digital photography and, right. <laughs> you know, we save them as JPEGs and tips and whatever. Who's to say in 20 years, anybody's going to be able to look right. at Right, and you may not, right? Yeah. Again, and, right, and, like you can't, you know, you can't maybe, read. Maybe you're better off printing it and putting it in an album. Right, yeah, Keeping right. Like I can't, class. I used to save most of all my photos on CDs. Well, my computer doesn't have a CD player anymore. I yeah. can't look at them, you know? If the power goes out, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Say goodbye to the grid. Do we have any memories at all? Yeah, or are right. they still in bite land? Yeah, no, I I, I agree yeah. with the statement that a photo isn't a photo until it's a print. And I don't have many prints, so I, I really, I mean, I, I don't have, I can't say anything. I used to, I, I used to, I mean, I still have uh, 20 or 30 photo albums with photos in them over here, but I, I, but I stopped putting them in albums, you know, like eventually they got put in boxes and there they sit, you know? Yes, yes, <laughs> so. exactly. That's a whole I mean, discussion, I think, for another day. <laughs> well, scanning all my dad's stuff. I mean, it right. was a really yep. fun thing. I enjoyed all that. I mean, it really took me. Yeah, down, see, you know? I can't. It's a tedious job. I'm I'm struggling with that one. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that's yeah. the the single biggest reason to make photo books every now and then because at right. least you're printing it. Which is a good a good <laughs> point too. And somebody somebody brought that up in a conversation in the uh, um, in the community that they took like wedding photos or whatever trips I've done a couple of books for trips that I've been on and things like that. But I don't, I, it is one of those things that you probably should do more regularly, you know, but then what like happens to. to those books? What, where yeah, do right. they go? Right. Nobody who wants that book when I'm gone, <laughs> you know, then you're just creating trash for, well, you know, <laughs> let's get into the library. <laughs> I get, well, you could and hope, you know, Maybe somebody would get some enjoyment out of looking at some trips. I'm guessing people it would, who don't, it would end up who don't somewhere, travel yeah. or 
who knows but that like i said i i think that's a whole other discussion well it is that's an interesting thing i think about that when i was watching my dad pass away from cancer yeah. a few years ago and i was in the hospital spent a lot of time at duke university with him and and uh, just thinking, about, I began to think about the doctors. It's like, wow, man. I mean, these guys spend so much time, you know, caring for people in scenarios like this that they know. I mean, they know. What, what do they do when they get to the end of their lives? Right. Right. I mean, who's going to help them? Right. You know, kind of a thing. They know there's no real help to come in the right. end. That's yeah. in that way. So it's almost, you know, almost, they kind of go through that, too, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. That's a kind of a morbid example. Sorry. It is. No, it is. It is morbid, but it's it's life. I mean, death is part of life. It so it, it's something that, you know, you think about after you go through it, like I said, too, I yes. went through a few years ago. But, you know, yes. and I and and you look at the stuff, you know, we all accumulate so much stuff. <laughs> exactly. So. Exactly. And I remember Scott making the statement once that he had planned on, you know, a lot of people, their retirement, they, they plan for their retirement. He's like, my retirement is my photographs. I plan to make, I hope I can make money on my photos long after I'm retired. And that stayed in my mind too. I thought that seems a, a wise way to look at it, to be able to look at the body of work that you're doing as something that can continue to stand the test of time. Right. I don't have that confidence in my own abilities at this stage. But... Well, that's just it. Like, yeah. So like I said, I mean, are my photos going to be in a museum 50 years from now? I mean, you never know. Look at Vivian Mayer. I mean, you never know what could happen, you know? Yeah. You, or you even, never, even Ansel Adams. You never will know. <laughs> yeah, Ansel Adams never think. saw any success from the, from him as photos. Right. Now right. look at it. Right. Yeah. So, I, you know. <laughs> Good points. Good points. Future. <laughs> Future content for sure. Uh, big conversations, no. but a good, um, enjoy chatting with you guys, man. Thanks. Sorry, yeah, I'm gonna probably wrap it up here. If you guys sure. have any more questions, and and in the community again, you know, um, Arthur, you know, ask questions. Um, there's a few of the authors who are fairly, um, yes, <laughs> fairly regularly in the community, so. Um, you know, and the, the people in there are, we have a range of, of levels of, of capabilities, um, you know, but if you want feedback, uh, there's a section in the community called photo assist, you know, cause I personally would rather have it, um, stuck to the side in one, in one place where people are trying to do the same thing instead of just open, uh, you know, open season on photos for people, um, mm -hmm. And that can be the one place for people to get feedback and, and I can start promoting that a little bit further and we can start doing that even just in that group on there. Um, instead of waiting every month to do that, you know. Absolutely. On demand. So, so we can, you know, that's an option too, um, that we can start doing that in there. Um, and again, anybody who wants, you know, has specific things they want to learn about just like um, this will be posted at the recording will be posted, but just like asking, you know. Uh, who do you guys learn from? Uh, you know, who do you like to work with? Who teaches landscape? Who teaches this? You know, there's a wealth of knowledge out there. There's a lot of people in that community, you know, and again, we've all we've all been down the road. We're all in different parts down the road. We've all learned from somebody somewhere along the line um, that we may or may not recommend. You know, somebody might have somebody they would not recommend, you know, same thing, but um, the, the just put it out there in the community and, and um, you know, we hopefully we'll get some good, good information that way too. Absolutely. Absolutely. But sounds like we have aliens. Yep. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody has anything else, no, I'm good, man. Yeah, good we'll, talking with you guys. We'll yep. get, thanks, Mark. Yep. Appreciate thank you. your contribution. I appreciate it. And thank um, you, hopefully Arthur, that helped you out a little bit. It yeah, indeed. Thank you all very much. All sure. right. Uh, and then we'll see you guys next <laughs> next month. I we might go back to this to the evening time since none of our European friends, I think, oh cost might be. I don't know. But we'll try to uh change the times up a little bit again, maybe. We'll see. All right. Thank you guys. I appreciate you guys thank joining. You. All right. Thanks, we'll talk about you later. Bye. Thanks, Gail. Bye. Bye.